Hello, gentlemen, and welcome to Chapter 1 of Honors Chemistry. Chapter 1 is entitled The Study of Chemistry. We'll cover in this video sections 1 through sections 3. This board looks a little bit intimidating, looks a little bit full, but it's just like your brains. Bear with me and you'll be just okay. So the first thing we'll do is define what chemistry is. Chemistry is the study of the properties and behavior of matter. Now, what exactly is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Something that occupies space, we say, has volume. Now, matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Well, that's everything. Everything has mass. Everything occupies space. Chemistry is a study of the properties and behaviors of everything. Now, in our world, we deal with two kind of frames or two type of, I guess, viewpoints. One is the macroscopic. This is ordinary sized objects. Chemistry deals with something called the microscopic or even the sub-microscopic, which is even smaller than microscopic. And that deals with atoms and molecules. Now let's talk about matter. Matter is anything and everything, but there are two different branches of matter. One is pure substances. The other branch is mixtures. First, we're going to talk about pure substances. Now, what is a pure substance? It's matter with a distinct property and composition that does not vary from sample to sample. From, from one sample of, I guess we'll call it a substance, and the other substance is just like it, they will be exactly the same. They would not vary. Pure substances can be broken down into two categories, elements and compounds. I'm sure you've heard of both of those before this class. Now, an element is a substance that cannot be decomposed into simpler substances. It is in its simplest form. It cannot be broken down into other substances. We'll get more into that later on. An example of an element is oxygen. If you look at any periodic table, you can find this symbol here, oxygen with an 8 there and a 16 there. This is an element. We find that atoms make up elements. Atoms are the small building blocks of matter. Each element is composed of a unique kind of atom. So elements are made of small atoms. The other type of pure substance is a compound. Compounds are substances that are composed of two or more different atoms. So if I have an oxygen and let's say a hydrogen, they come together, they form a compound. Like H2O, that's an example of one. We have two hydrogens coming with an oxygen, coming together, forming a compound. Compounds versus molecules. You'll hear molecule being thrown around a lot. You heard molecules up here. A molecule is simply when two atoms, the same or not the same, come together. It's very, very general. Two, two or more nonmetals coming together is a molecule. So all compounds are molecules, but not all molecules are compounds. We'll get into that later on. Little note down here. Compounds can be separated by chemical means only. I mean, I can't take a compound and just smash it or, you know, just heat it up and it be dissolved. Not all the time. It has to be in, through a chemical reaction that compounds are decomposed. The other type of matter are mixtures. Now, we encounter mixtures very often, every single day, without a doubt, mixtures are in your life. So a mixture is a physical blend of two or more substances in which each substance retains its chemical identity. Key point here is that it's a physical blend. This is a physical process. You know, taking two things together, physically mixing them up, but those separate things retain their original chemical identities. There are two types of mixtures that we can talk about. The first one is a homogeneous mixture. You know that this root word, Homo means same, so keep that in mind. So these are mixtures that are uniform throughout, and all parts appear the same. So it looks the same throughout. All parts of this mixture look exactly the same. An example would be salt water, or air, or Gatorade. If you look at a glass of salt water or a glass of Gatorade, it all looks the same. You can't say, oh, well, there's the powder, there's the water, there's the sugar. You can't point out those things. They all look the same. Oftentimes, we call homogeneous mixtures solutions. Keep that in mind. Solutions. We call those homogeneous mixtures solutions in chemistry. Other type of mixture we have is a heterogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous, root word hetero, means different. 
These are mixtures that do not have definite composition or appearance throughout. The, they look differently throughout. They have different what we call phases. An example would be a salad or pizza or a Snickers bar. If you make a salad, you can definitely visibly point out, oh, there are the croutons, there, there, there's the lettuce, there's the tomatoes, the bacon bits, whatever you like in your salad, you can point them out. On a pizza, you can say, there's the crust, there's the pepperoni, there's the sausage. Snickers bar, there are the peanuts, there's the caramel, there's the chocolate. You can point those out physically and see the different parts of the mixture. Now, matter comes in different states. We all know this. States of matter that we know commonly are solids, liquids, and gases. Now, there's another one called plasma, but we'll get to that later on. Solids have particles that are packed very tightly together, closely together like this picture resembles. And they vibrate, so they're attached together and they vibrate. It has a definite shape and volume, meaning you cannot really change the shape or volume that a solid holds. You can alter its form, but you can't really change its volume. It cannot be compressed, meaning I can't have this marker here, and I can't compress it into a space that big. I can't do it, it's impossible. An example of this would be ice. Liquid. Liquid is our second state of matter, and the particles in a liquid are loosely packed, and they slide past one another. That's why water kind of flows. Everything's just sliding past one another. It has an indefinite shape, meaning it takes the shape of its container. If I put water into a very small cup, it takes the shape of that cup. If I put it into a very large you know, dish, it will take the shape of that dish. But it has a definite volume, meaning if I have five liters of water, and I put it into a container, that container will hold five liters of water. If I put it into a different container, that container would hold five liters of water. I can't put water into a container and automatically it just goes up into 10 liters. I can't do that. And it cannot be compressed. Just as I can't make five liters turn into 10 liters, I can't make five liters of water or liquid, excuse me, turn into three liters. I can't compress it down to something of a smaller volume. An example of a liquid would be water. A third state of matter we're talking about is gas, oftentimes referred to as vapor if it's coming from the liquid state. A gas, <clears throat> the, well, the particles in a gas are spread very far apart from one another. They're moving around extremely rapidly and they're colliding with one another. This is the basis for chemical reaction, collisions. It has both an indefinite shape and an indefinite volume, meaning it will take the shape of its container. So I'll put a gas, let a gas out, it will spread out to the room and take the shape of the container of the room. And it would also expand its volume. So I have a gas that's this much. It will expand its volume in, into the shape of its container. So it expands both shape and volume. And it can be compressed because its volume is indefinite. I can take gas and I can squish it down into a volume this big. That's, what we, that's why we have pressurized containers and pressurized tanks and pressurized rooms because gases can be compressed. An example of that is water vapor, which is steam, carbon dioxide, or oxygen gas. So we talked about what matter is, the different types of matter, different states of matter. Now we're gonna to refer to different properties of matter. So matter has different properties. First off, a property is any characteristic that allows us to recognize and distinguish a particular type of matter. Matter, we have different types of matter all over the world, in our environment, in nature. Properties help us distinguish one from another. There are two major types of properties. Physical properties, which can be observed without changing the identity and composition of a substance. Again, physical properties are properties of matter that can be observed without changing what that matter is at the chemical level. For example, the color, its odor, Density, its melting or boiling point, or hardness of a substance is a physical property. Chemical properties, they describe the way in which a substance may change or may react to form another substance. So this is what may happen. This is what can be observed. An example of a chemical property is flammability. It has the ability to create flames. So something, if it's flammable, that's a chemical property of that substance. Now these chemical properties can be described in terms of other properties, meaning 
These examples, color, odor, density, melting, boiling point, flammability, they can be put into different categories. Here are the two different categories. One, you know, these could be described as intensive properties. So properties that do not depend on the amount of a substance being examined and can be used to identify that substance. So intensive properties, it doesn't depend on how much you have. But these are very useful because they can help us determine you know, what substance we're talking about, the identity. For example, temperature or melting point. If I have 5 grams of ice or 500 grams of ice, all that ice will melt at the same melting point, 0 degrees Celsius. The other type of property is an extensive property. These are properties that depend on the amount of a sample, so the opposite of intensive. They do depend on the amount of the sample. An example of an extensive property is mass or volume. If I have more of my sample, I'll have more, more mass and more volume. Now, here, this is just a little bit of breakdown of what matter is, states of matter, and the properties that matter holds. In our next class, we'll talk about, well, what, what happens if we take away this can, or we take away may, and things actually do happen. So we'll talk about physical changes and chemical changes, not just what can happen and what may happen, what actually happens when things do happen. So gentlemen, please take notes, go over anything that you need here, Rewind and come prepare. Adios.